Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Minette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs, live with Minette, where we gather in the mornings for creative play, for self-exploration, and really how to use art as a process for self-discovery and personal growth. And the topic of today is how can we use intuitive collage to connect to our soul's yearnings. What I love about using intuitive collage is that it allows us to bypass our overthinking mind and get directly into the unconscious of our thoughts. So I have started by just pulling a bunch of images and I'm just gonna play and create and see where, where things go today. So I don't have a, you know, rarely when I start these processes do I have kind of a, a destination in mind. It's really always like looking for what is the place that I want to start? What is the place that, the place of beginning, right? That sort of point of entry rather than um, point of departure. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch my screen here. And I'm trying to see if I can uh, do the time lapse on my phone a little bit and be on the, the screen here with you guys. So I'm messing with my technology a little bit as I get going and see if we can just make it so we can see all of the things in a way that feels good and useful. So I am working in this beautiful handmade journal inspired by my dear friend Andrea Shebelu from a work of heart studio and she calls this her daily creative everything journal so i've been having a lot of fun just playing and exploring i have you know pages that are started and pages that are unfinished and this was a class i taught on accessing joy but i've been feeling really called to spend more time just exploring this type of collage and seeing where is that going to take me on my journey. And so I'm just going to kind of dive right into this process here. Again, I'm trying to get it where we can see it on my phone and on your screen both pretty easily. So if we lift that up a little bit, that feels a little bit better. It's going to be what it's going to be. So forgive me for fussing with my tech while we're getting started but I have this nice big spread to work on. And I have some book pages here that felt kind of interesting as a, a first layer, you know, some leftover from my prayer flags that I started last week. And sometimes I need to just start by putting things down on the page and not worrying about where I'm going or what it's going to look like. But the question on my mind this morning, I just started reading a new book. You guys know I'm a voracious reader. I just started reading a new book called The Inner Work of Age and about how learning to sit with, think about, you know, talk about our age is an inside out job. And so often we're so caught up in reflections of the external that we forget about doing our most important work, which is usually our inner work. And the, the subtitle of the book is about shifting from role to soul. And as so many of us enter midlife, roles do change, right? Roles do change. And so I think it's essential to think about these ideas, right, of shifting from role to soul. Um, good morning. Good to be here, Tori, if only for just a bit. Leslie, I started talking a, a couple of minutes early. I just did my, my little typical introduction a few minutes early. So um, nothing, nothing too dramatic. I promise you didn't miss anything. I just did my introduction to what painting in your PJs is all about. And that means you guys didn't have to listen to it for like the, you know, 500th time. 
And I'm working with intuitive collage today. I've also found it takes a little while to notify people when I go live. So if I start talking a couple of minutes early, then you guys actually, actually um, have that opportunity, right, to get notified when I go live. So I'm working with intuitive collage today and kind of this theme of connecting to my soul's yearnings or my soul's longings. As we age, we become less interested in the outer world and often more introspective and interested in what's happening with the inner world. And so I've just pulled a bunch of images and collage materials. And I'm just going to start placing things because I find that intuitive collage often tells me the story that I need to hear that I can't quite identify. Tea bags out of my tea. What are you guys sipping on this morning? I've already had two cups of coffee, so I have switched to some yummy tea for now. I'm trying to be mindful of how much coffee that I'm drinking. Take a sip. I had a lovely long morning of reading and journaling and then went out into my yard and did some weeding because, man, the dandelions are just taken over. So I'm feeling drawn to these little angelic cherubs from some Renaissance painter or another. And I don't know if you can hear Diego in the background. So... He is just having a blast. But I started thinking about mood, right? And, you know, what's the mood and what uh, what might answer that soul's longing? And one of the things that came up for me is always, right, this idea of self-love and self-acceptance that so many of us tend to struggle with throughout our lives. And, and as we age, it seems to become easier, right? We start to care less about what others think, right? Painting a frog, I love that. Um, we have more confidence in our own sort of authentic knowing and connection to who we are in the moment. And I love this self-portrait of Van Gogh with all of his painting tools. And here he is somewhere in Arles. And I love these. So I'm already seeing a palette emerge, which is kind of fascinating because I didn't come in here with a palette in mind. Definitely love these trees. These great, big, beautiful images are for, from the Horizon magazine that I often talk about. And what's so interesting is that like the color palettes are similar, even though the styles are different, the themes are different. Going to put on a pot for tea. I love that. Working on rolls, I play watercolor. Beautiful. And it's so interesting at this, you know, again, this age and stage of life. Rolls change, right? Rolls change. I love this picture of this grotto or this doorway with these faces, right? And sometimes entering into our sort of inner unknown kind of feels scary, you know, being willing to sort of meet our own shadow and do that shadow work. So again, right now, I'm just tearing images. There's no place for them to be. Good morning, Marion. I am into some intuitive collage this morning, and my theme is connecting to my soul's yearnings, connecting to my soul's yearnings. Don't know where I'm going yet, but I'm just going to sift through a pile that I pulled out, and we're just going to pull some images and see where I get to. Again, this is one of those you know, things that uh, I took away from my work with Kat Caracello and Journey Path Institute, as well as from 
my soul collage work is just allowing the unconscious to speak through images. So my goal today is to let that story unfold, to allow the story to unfold. I don't know what the that story is. I think maybe there's some definitely my soul has been yearning for adventure and travel. And I think my husband is too, because we ran out of our favorite chili powder from Santa Fe. And so maybe a, a road trip is looming in the near future. And I really, I really love this adventures ahead, this, this group of women, but this feels modern. And it's interesting. There's this sort of, you know, Renaissance, Impressionist feel here, and so that must be for another story. And these pages are leftover pages from my Mythical Makeover series in the Nancy Drew book that I use to make a journal. And there's a lot of nostalgia in those pages. I don't know what is up with my cats. They're being quite bonkers this morning. I loved this little sort of sun and stars. I love this quote, those who live by the sea can hardly form a single thought of which the sea would not be part. And I would say that was very true for us when we lived in Santa Barbara, but I might change that today to say those who live by the water, because I find that, you know, taking a, a walk each day to where I can see or be by water, whether it's the pond in the park or down to the big Thompson River that flows down from Rocky Mountain National Park. All right, definitely feeling a few words. My collage doesn't always have words on it, but I'm just kind of noticing that there's wanting to be a few little words on here. I was also very drawn to these playful animals this morning. I know not all of you are on social media, Facebook or Instagram, but I shared earlier, I love that, like, just this cat just has a look of such deep satisfaction on his face. And it's like, okay, I want more of that, please. And I'm wanting to maybe push the, the wordiness to the background and have the images pop out. And yet somehow they want to be sort of, you know, peeking, peeking through because words are such an important part of my life. I shared in my introduction a little bit about the newest book that I'm reading, and it is called The Inner Work of Age. And she has uh, kind of an interesting perspective, or let me just say in a, in a perspective that I agree with about how often when we think about aging, whether we're in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, or beyond, that there's a lot of outer work that happens and we're focused on our health and how we look and appearances and what often gets forgotten is that inner work of the spiritual work, the shadow work. So both spiritual and psychology, um, psychological perspectives of who am I being, right? Who am I being? Who am I becoming? And how essential it is for us to do the inner work of looking at the roles we play and how as we age, our roles shift. And she says they shift from role to soul, right? They shift from being more career focused to being more personally focused on, you know, who am I being and how can I contribute, but in a, in a different way, what's going to serve me and serve others? And I think it's such an interesting 
question. And so, Leslie, I love that you're doing a watercolor about the roles you play, because I think it's an important question to look at. What are the roles we play and how have those roles changed, right? How have those roles changed? And there's something so satisfying about tearing images. And keep falling in love with the joy. I think, you know, it's such a good reminder. And I had an interesting conversation about this idea that, you know, we can be in joy and sorrow at the same time. So noticing, starting to notice the themes of how does this connect and relate to what my soul is yearning for, like what's what's showing up, right? Like I'm I'm just being in open curiosity here. There's no destination in mind. There's just that inner reflection and being here making time for that inner reflection. I've been working this week, actually my husband and I both have, on like changing up routines, right? And structuring our days in a way that support us more, a little bit better. Um, and for me, one of the things that really needed to change was my I want a tree, but I think maybe I want one of Van Gogh's trees. Uh, one of the things that was really important for me to change was my evening routine. And rather than, you know, watching too much TV, so I don't have a problem with watching TV, but, you know, doing that right before bed, I didn't feel like I was there was any closure to my day in any sort of meaningful way. So I have shifted up my routine so that the tea, I'm a very, I go to bed very, very early. Anyway, my husband and I both do. And as you know, I rise very early. So what needed to happen was that that TV needed to go off early. And I've added an evening ritual to the Okay, so I'm going to set that there. It's looking pretty messy in the moment. It wants to be there, but now everything's kind of moving around. But I needed an evening routine that felt like it sort of bookended my days in the same way that I have such a solid um, morning routine that serves me. And in doing that, I even changed up my morning routine a little bit. You know, I'm rolling right out of bed into some yoga I love this image so much, and I kind of love these images even together. So there's something else that's wanting to be birthed here that feels like a different story, but still connected to the theme of my soul's longing. I also, as I, so I'm flipping through all these images, and, and, and this book I'm reading is just sparking so many amazing creative ideas. I love, this is the, the Venus de Milo, and it made me think about ages and stages, and, you know, what was important to me as a young woman was appearance, right? And then there's just sort of this notice of how I'm shifting in age and role and what feels important and there's still some beauty but her reflection is very much inward focused and then you know there's this sort of graceful older woman sitting quietly in her garden and um, actually it's uh, Cezanne's wife it says right and so just you know noticing what I'm being drawn to and noticing those shifts in ages and stages. And I even felt like so drawn to this cave painting as well and talking about, you know, taking me all the way back to the beginnings and to origins. So it feels like there's going to be a few days of this, like connecting to ages and stages and souls yearning over the, the next few days. I love this. It reminds me of Joan of Arc. I don't know that uh, 
it said who this was. So it says these are all images of Venus. So um, I don't know who the artist is, but I really, I love this palette. And I love this fierce warrior woman energy. And again, it's not my energy today. It was a role that I played for a while. So I'm very present to these roles. I'm very present to seeking new directions. I'm very present to the passage of time. I still have some of my Nancy Drew bits floating around here. So all of these thoughts are shifting and sorting and swirling. And so I often find that intuitive collage is a really great way to sift and sort, to sift and sort through my thoughts so that I can get a better picture of the story. So I can get a better picture of the story. And I think I actually want to cut this compass out. What are other people working on? I'm super, super curious. I'm over here rambling away. Just sharing all the bazillion thoughts that are in my head. That's how it feels this morning, is that I have so much floating around in my head. And often I use my morning walks to sort of muddle my way through that. But this morning my garden needed weeding. Like my front yard was getting embarrassing because there were so many things growing. All right, so now I feel like I have this like giant mess. I don't know where it's going. I have one, I like the design. The colors kind of match, but nope, not feeling that. Definitely loving these trees and have been thinking a lot about trees. The theme for my next retreat which is going to be at the end of October here in my studio, is going to be about the tree of life. And we're going to create some magical trees of life. Okay, where I'm going? Like I'm feeling slow and thoughtful. I'm not feeling rushed. You guys know I often work very, very fast. And that's not what's happening this morning. And I think it's part of that sort of introspective, in my head feeling. And so what that means is I probably need to get out of my head and trust my own process here on the page. I didn't do any journaling first like I normally do on this page because I had been working in another journal upstairs and so had already done quite a bit of writing this morning. And I definitely feel like like my life, my inner life got better. Things changed. My relationship with myself in spirit improved. When I really committed to a morning routine and that morning routine for me has been ongoing now for at least five years. I think the during the pandemic that really was sort of birthed at that time and so I'm not someone who's always really good about just sticking to things but what I have noticed is lately that what has stuck, right? Across the years, what has stuck? What continues to serve and nourish? What's the thing that I feel grumpy if I don't do? So I'm very present to how my routines, you know, support me or don't. Like, what do I miss? What are the routines that are easy to take on the road with me? so that I don't miss them when I'm gone.
Yeah, routine feels good. After saying I could never commit to a long series of art making, I discovered a 50 small painting series to get better at acrylics. Not one a day as I thought, but returning to it after a few days break. I love that. That sounds perfect, Marion. Beautiful. And routine, it does. It feels good. It, it's, you know, it creates like security and stability. Uh, yes, it will be completely different, Leslie, than the online one that uh, Andrea and Brian and I did a few years ago. This will be much more introspective. And I'm thinking it might even be watercolor focused this time instead of acrylic, but I haven't committed to, to that yet. But the idea, very similar to how we work together around the inner wisdom keeper, would be really looking at all the just sort of parts of our lives. Actually, you guys, I got to meet Tori in person on Sunday. It was so much fun. And we had beautiful coffee together up in Estes Park. So, so magical. So, Marion, I'm excited when you come this way, and hopefully we get to connect in Boulder in person as well. All right, these words are just making me happy. Like, there's something very calming about just gluing words down, and I'm wondering if I have the, the rest of the book sitting here. Of course, it's over on my desk because I want this. I wonder if the other page needs words. Or maybe it doesn't, and it's all perfect. And I'm just going to be brave and start gluing things down. So the idea would be to really look at the roots of who we are, what we value, what we believe, right? For me, the, the trunk of the tree, like that's the a lot about our core gifts, and then, you know, what are we branching and living into? What are we branching and living into? So I'm thinking it will be some painting, some collage, which we did almost all painting last time. But yeah, completely different, completely different from the uh, last retreat or the, the one from a few years ago. I just love the, the Tree of Life theme. Um, I think it's a valuable, useful metaphor for where we find ourselves in our lives. And Leslie, in typical minute fashion, it's not 100% clear in my head yet, but it will be going from the inner to the outer. Like, how can we use the Tree of Life as a metaphor for who we're being in the world, what do we want to see flourishing and growing. That's my thoughts so far. Awesome, Marion. Those kind of resources are, are fantastic. And I have an email that will be going out on Thursday about this, but next Tuesday, 4th of July, my husband and I always just kind of stay in because crowds and fireworks and, you know, just not our thing. And so on Thursday, I'm going to go live for four hours here on YouTube. Uh, you know, clearly I will take some breaks, but I want to do a series on painting freedom. And Marion, you made me think of it with your small paintings, because that's my, my idea is at the top of each hour, I will start a new painting and see what can I create in four hours, even if it were just fun, painty backgrounds. Interesting, the matte medium is moving the, the color off of this page a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to have a, sort of a mini painting marathon next week here, right here live on my YouTube channel. do something a little fun and different. And since I know that that will be a day that I'll be here home painting anyway, it's way more fun to paint in community. So you can drop in for any or all of it and create your own little mini 
paint along, collage along series. And Leslie, of course, it would be absolutely delightful to, to have you back in the studio again. What a dream that would be. Twice in one year would be really magical. And I also decided that for the first time ever in, since I started doing wild creative abandon retreats in my house in Goleta, before the, the pandemic was the, the first one, and then I did two in... Denver and then the one recently here and I'm going to do an online version at the end of August for for the first time so I'm curious to see it'll be a, a much abbreviated version with a lot of spaciousness in it but I'm super excited about that lots going on over here and we're definitely just feeling like we're going to be doing some rebranding so I feel like there's a lot happening in my inner world and my outer world and I think it's this sort of just you know fruitful summertime right where it just feels like they're all the things that have been lying fallow right underground or, or starting to surface in some new and different new and different ways these sort of shadowy watchers are so interesting. I mean, I love Surratt's work, but in the in the context here of the the piece, they feel like these witnesses, and they're very prim and proper, and you know, sort of buttoned up. And then we have Van Gogh, right, who's more connected to earth and nature and adventure. So this is maybe not what I want and this you know opening and expansion is more of what my soul is longing for so I'm starting to see stories appearing here all right he's gonna go on the top I think so I don't want to glue him down yet I could have done this all with glue stick and I'm not certain that I won't want to maybe paint over the top of this or where I might want to go next. So I'm using matte medium because it leaves my options open and it makes for sort of flat layers a little bit different. I don't know why I'm getting so much glitch page today. And I love kind of working, you know, back and forth across the two pages. And these, it's interesting. It feels like there's a lot of witnessing that's happening. And there's, so there's this older, finely dressed couple. But then there's also these little cherubs who are looking on. And again, this, you know, there has to be some sort of willingness to maybe face the, face the unknown, to go through that portal and see what's on the other side, right? Our soul, soul resides in, in the shadow, in the insides of who we are, not the outsides of who we are. So maybe it might take some courage to consider this next adventure, right? Consider this next adventure. And I've slathered this matte medium on super, super thick. I want everything to be really well stuck down. I love creating just, you know, right across the, the center of the fold there. Hmm, I think maybe this one looks very much like it's supposed to be a, a cupid, so it connects to that, that theme of love, so it's holding a bow and arrows. And I'm tearing, not cutting. I love fussy cutting and taking the time to cut but it slows the process down. It 
disconnects me from the intuitive part and gets me into sort of that, you know, more inner per perfectionist piece. And because my theme here is connecting to my soul's yearning, I wanted to make sure, you know, that I stay in the in the openness, right? And I also love the look of the torn edges on the page. Matte medium on the front and the back of the image is what will help you get a really nice flat image. Interesting, I'm getting them all glued down. I'm like, okay, I don't have enough images here. So I'm going to have to figure out what else is going to go on this page. I think I started to say earlier about the animals that if you don't follow me on social media, either Instagram or Facebook, I shared about a magical encounter I had with a family of owls one day on my walk. They flew right in front of me, three of them. I saw three of them. And I followed them and watched where they went, but they were too far away in a tree by a pond that I couldn't get to. And so it was still really magical to have them fly in front of me. And I knew they were young. They weren't, they weren't very large. I wasn't sure what kind of owls they were. So the next day I went in search of the owls again. And they were sitting in a tree along my path in the same place they were before. And they sat there and posed so prettily for me to take a picture. And there were three young owlets, kind of teenager age. They were definitely past the, the fuzzy stage. And a parent that was this giant, beautiful, great horned owl. And the babies all had little tiny baby horns. It was just a truly incredible experience and I went back yesterday and then I think my husband was down there this morning and they were not in the same spot so maybe they have moved on. I've looked for their nest but I have not found where they're nesting. There must have been some good hunting where they were and they were in a tree that wasn't very tall which is probably maybe good for the babies although they're good flyers at this point. Thank you, Leslie. It was a beautiful experience. And I love the this idea of moving through a portal, Marion. It is an interesting exercise. And again, that you know, combination of the, the paint and the collage is super powerful. Super powerful. And what does it mean to go through the portal? These old magazine images, it's interesting that the color is coming off of them just a little bit. All right, it feels like this is coming together, and I'm not sure if it needs more images or if it needs paint. And usually that means it's, you know, I'm at a place maybe to pause, think about what's next. What if the happy place was going through the portal? Hmm, isn't that interesting? I don't want to see that portal. So maybe it's going to be half on the map. And half off. And I think I want this to say, keep falling in love with the journey. And I don't have the word journey yet so i'm going to have to go on a quest for or print out the word journey i think to add to the page hmm or what if it was just keep falling in love keep falling in love falling in love with life falling in love with myself right the more that i connect to love the better my life is the better my relationships are the more committed I am to people and causes that I care about.
interesting. I ended up sort of covering over the faces here. Yes, I said, what if my happy place is going through the portal? What if I have to go through the portal to find that place? All right, bring those spaces just a little bit there. And I've been thinking about, you know, this shadow work. And I was writing my journal this morning and, you know, thinking about Peter Pan. I don't know why it popped into my head. And, you know, he's looking for his shadow. And so many of us try to run away from our shadow, try to run away from our shadow. We hide from the shadow. All right, so what I'm feeling is that it's done for now. There's lots of curiosity here about how is this related to my soul's yearning. This is one that is going to definitely need some journaling. I'm also feeling that um, it's going to want some paint in some of these places to maybe just to fill in some of this white space, but I wanted to get completely dry and step away from it. So I'll finish it a little bit later and then uh, I'll show you the final version tomorrow. But for right now, this is my intuitive collage on connecting to my soul's yearning. I'm curious to see where the, the journey takes me, what else might flow from this. And I will be back tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Mountain Time, with some more intuitive collage and whatever theme I wake up with. So thank you all so much, as always, for joining me live. Thank you for watching the replay. Please hit the, hit the like button on the videos so that other people know it is worth coming and playing along with us here. Have a beautiful rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye.